What's up, everybody, and welcome back to this series of the John Bush Show. And this series is entitled End Racism. That's what we're going to title it, the End Racism Series, okay? I've experienced racism myself. I bet some of you watching this have as well. It's not fun. So let's get straight into it. So this video is titled The Grimaldi People. Why? Who were the Grimaldi people? When I found this out, it blew my mind. Adam and Eve, the first humans on earth, however you want to look at it, the first people on earth were from Africa. It makes sense. You're outside. You have to have melanin to be outside all day long. The first humans, they said, had very tightly peppercorned hair like modern day Africans today because that type of hair keeps you cool. But around 30, 40,000 years ago, between 20 to 40,000 years ago, a group of Africans left Africa through most likely through a land bridge. And it's just a bridge that connects land just like North and South America is connected by that Central America right there. And the Grimaldi people left Africa and went to Europe. These were the first known recorded modern day humans that left Africa and went to Europe. And about a hundred something years ago, they found the first Grimaldi man. He was about 10,000 years old. And they found several people like this. And as they've done research, they found that these people had typical African features or Negro features. Um, they had darker skin. And most of them had brown eyes, but some of them actually had blue eyes. That shocked me because blue eyes actually became a mutation around five, six, seven thousand years ago. Prior to 10,000 years ago, no one had white or fair skin. No one had tan skin. Everyone was black, 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 dark skin. OK, white skin, European features, European phenotype, blue eyes, green eyes. Those are recent mutations that humans went through. OK, why do they not teach this? Because the more educated you are, the more you realize how the history of the, the history of your country, the history of the world, even the history of yourself. The more you study history, the harder it will be to be racist towards other groups of people. The harder it'll be really hard to hate groups of people once you do your research. Basically, everyone came from the same place. We're all humans. We're all of the same race. We're all of the same species. We're all human. We just came out of Africa at different times. That's all it really is. Tigers of the big cat tigers started in Africa. They left Africa, created their own species, their own ethnicity, and became the lions of Asia. That's why tigers are not found in Africa. They're only found in Asia. They left Africa, okay? The Grimaldi people left Africa, went to Europe. They, if you've ever been to Europe, the winters are long as hell. It's very overcast. There's not sun 24 seven. It's not like living in Florida. Okay, that's why natives were darker because you had to be dark to live in Florida hundreds of years ago. But Europeans, they didn't need that curly hair anymore. They didn't need it. They didn't need the dark melanin skin because the sun wasn't as prominent in Europe. So they lost those features. Their features changed, their phenotype changed. Okay, the way their facial structure, it changed over thousands of years. Blue eyes became into existence because of a melanated pigmentation in their iris. Okay, all these features changed, but you're still African. You just left the equator. You're, you're faded black people, basically. That's why we are all the same. We're, we're very different, yet all the same. We all come from Africa at the end of the day. When you learn that, if I would have learned that in school, when I went to college and, and some of the white boys that I hung out with were being racist and trying to say that white people were superior, I could have said, wait, you came from us because, you know, blue eyes, green eyes, which is very prominent in Europe. That's a recessive gene. A black man could not have come from a white man. A white man had to come from a black man. That's we have dominant genes. Brown eyes. These are dominant genes. 
we have to one of the biggest solutions i keep feeling that this country needs is you have to put it in the curriculum so then when young white people learn the truth about the history and where they came from it doesn't matter what their parents try to teach them because they've been educated they can teach their parents now i'm seeing it on social media now my neighbor and my sister just wrote this all over our driveway without telling my parents and when my parents saw it they texted us and saying we should have asked first and to fucking hose it down are we gonna hose it down no maybe because i will probably get hit if i don't <laughs> and this is the reason there is racism in this world because our parents can't understand a simple message that us kids wrote in chalk on the fucking driveway just because you were raised into a family that's prejudiced doesn't mean you have to remain that way on social media now young white folks are teaching their parents about racism about miseducation about where humans came from that we're all the same we just lost we're just different pigmentations when you left africa and different features you have to put it in the curriculum you have to stop these lies about christopher columbus you got to put the grimaldi people in the curriculum it's going to drive out racism education and exposure will drive out racism i'm telling you i hang out with tons of different people from different ethnicities and i see the stories to, still to this day there are schools in mississippi and alabama that do not celebrate martin luther king day they celebrate general robert e lee day that was the general that tried to enslave and keep four million black people enslaved okay you keep doing that you keep leaving these mon monuments up of, of generals who wanted to keep black folks enslaved. Of course, racism ain't going to go nowhere. You have to get it at childhood. You have to teach it at childhood. Okay, for the next generation can eradicate racism. Another part, now that we know about the Grimaldi people, now that we know that there's still some places in America that celebrate General Robert E. Lee Day, you have to understand that if you get it at an elementary level, education about the Grimaldi people, education about America's foundation, it's going to be a lot harder for you to be racist. We can eradicate this hate and racism that we have in this country. Think about it. Everybody I see posting Black Lives Matter, they've talked to me or from what I've observed, they either have a black friend, a black coworker, a black spouse, black husband, mixed kids. They have someone black that is close to them so they can start to relate that, oh, all lives cannot matter until black lives matter. Every single person I see posting has a friend, co-worker, peer, they, their neighbor is black, they, their ex-boyfriend's black. It's something along those lines that says, you know what, I can start to relate to this. And that led me to believe that in order for us to eradicate racism and have a good, long-lasting solution for racism, you have to have exposure between the two major superpowers in this country. Honestly, three is black, white, and Hispanic. But black and white have, those ethnic groups have been white people being from Europe, black people being from Africa. Those two major ethnic groups have been around in this country for 400 years. We built the country together. Black folks built it as slaves for free. White folks handed out the work assignments. <laughs> That's basically how we got the biggest, uh, best economy in the world. Because for 400 years, blacks and whites have been living near each other or together or been living in the same country, in school, in the curriculum, you, we don't have to force black and white people to live together. We don't have to force black and white people to work together. We don't have to force black and white people to um, date each other. But we do have to force them to communicate. We have to, in school, young black kids and young white kids need to have field trips where they come and talk to each other. Schools are still very segregated today. I know because I've been, I, I was in the white schools though, okay? I grew up, I, my high school was 85% white. I got one of the best educations in Illinois. I know what segregated schools look like. I saw one fight in high school. My boy that went to the school in the inner city, he saw one per day. I know what segregated schools look like. Of course, 
you have white folks growing up, ain't talked to a black person in their whole life, then they become a police officer going to these impoverished black neighborhoods where they've seen, never seen poverty like this before in their life due to redlining and segregation and separate but not equal. Now you like, ugh, these black folks, Trump said it, he, these black folks live like animals because white folks are living like on heaven on earth. I've seen, I've been, go to Sarasota, Rich Carl, I've seen white neighborhoods with wealth. It's like heaven on earth. So you got to understand, of course, his brain can't process why these black folks live like this, why they act like this. They can't process it. Plus, you're already taught to be racist. Hence, you have Eric Gardner. You have George Floyd. That's how this stuff keeps happening. Kids in elementary school need to have field trips once a month where they go to a white neighborhood and white kids go to a black neighborhood and they talk to each other and play with each other. You have to force them to communicate as, as just to have a conversation. Let them Skype each other. When they get to junior high school, black schools and white schools need to be communicating in some form or fashion. Black schools and white schools, need to, they need to Skype, FaceTime, uh, talk to each other, have debates with each other. You can separate but equal did not work. That ain't it. It did not work. You have to you have to get white folks talking to black folks. That needs to be a mandatory thing in this country. That's the only way we're going to get rid of this racism. Plus teaching the correct history. That's the only way. Black folks cannot eradicate racism and hate from this country because we didn't create it. How are we going to solve a problem that we didn't start? Black folks did not bring themselves over here and enslave themselves for hundreds of years and then bring us through segregation and voter suppression. That's not what happened. Okay? But you have to fight for freedom. People at the top are not going to give it to us for free. So we, we have to solve the problem together. And it's just communication. That's one of the biggest things that's going to help this cause. So that's all I have today. We can, we can drive this out through education. We can drive this out through teaching about the Grimaldi people, teaching about the history and creation of America, making, forcing us as a nation to have people that are in white privileged neighborhoods, force them to talk and communicate to black people and people that are in this country that don't look like them. You have to force it, at least the communication. You got to force it. OK, put it in the curriculum. That's all I have for today, y'all. Let's make this happen. Thank <laughs> you.